Hello and welcome back to Heart Breathings. I just got back from a wonderful writing retreat in Hilton Head Island. And while I was there, I recorded a vlog style um, videos of my writing retreat, just little snippets of how things were going because so many of you kind of wanted to see how writing retreats go for me. Um, sometimes I will do hotel nights where it's just one night by myself. And sometimes I will do three or four two or three kind of nights, I guess, at an Airbnb or a hotel or a resort or something with a friend of mine where we can kind of split the cost and where we can cook while we're there. So this was three nights at Hilton Head Island Airbnb with my friend Zoe, and I set a goal of 20,000 words, and you can keep watching to see if I hit it. And this is going to actually be a two-part video because I wanted to not only give you guys a glimpse of how things look while I'm at the writing retreat, but I also wanted to give you my top 10 tips for how to have a successful writing retreat where you get lots done and you have lots of focus. So I split it into two videos. So this first video today is going to be more of the vlog of how my writing retreat went. And then tomorrow I will upload a video of my top 10 tips for how to have a successful writing retreat of your own. So keep watching. So my friend Zoe and I have just checked into our writing retreat. So I wanted to show you guys since I had recorded a writing retreat live um, a couple months ago and then accidentally deleted it from my channel, I decided that I'm going to just do another kind of vlog style and show you guys what are my must haves for when I'm doing a writing retreat, and kind of show you around the place that we're at today, which is in Hilton Head Island and show you the things I have to bring with me and how I get so much done and plan for success when I'm on these writing retreats. This is our place. We're renting just Airbnb is how we typically do it. Sometimes we will stay at hotels. But what I love about Airbnb when you're staying for like two or three nights is that you cook your own meals. So you can see we've already gotten all of our groceries. We stopped. I brought some things from home like overnight oats and some different things like that. Um, and we've got like tea. Sometimes the Airbnbs will have like a Keurig or something like that. But we drink more tea right now than coffee. So we're not too worried about that. Then you can see we kind of have stocked up on waters and lots of healthy foods. I know I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I don't eat really flour or sugar. Every once in a while I indulge in something like some corn chips, but, and Zoe doesn't either. So um, we don't eat sugar or flour. So lots of veggies. And that is one of my first must haves for having a successful writing retreat. When I was doing writing retreats in the beginning, I would pretty much binge on Red Bull and just gross foods, pizza and everything else. And it was great and it would keep me up for like one night, but then I would crash and I would feel terrible and I just wouldn't be able to get as much done. Um, so it's a pretty small place. You can see it's got this kind of nice back porch over here and then it's got um, just a nice seating area here and then the kitchen. And then we've got our desk over there, which I'll show you in a second. There's two bedrooms in this place. And so you've got one main bedroom, just a nice little bathroom over there. So hello. And then here are some of my other must haves. So my first must have for a successful writing retreat is healthy foods. It's absolutely a must have. The more snacky stuff, pizzas, um, you know, junk food, sugar that you eat, the worse you're going to feel in my opinion. So you won't get as much done. So lots of water, lots of good healthy fruits and snacks. Um, and lots of good healthy food instead of eating out a lot. Um, and taking the time to eat out can be, you know, detrimental to getting your focus and getting work done. So I don't recommend that as well. So here's some other things that I always bring with me. So I have these um, Psychic Sense Chakra oils and I only have three. I have the Solar Plexus, the Brow Chakra and the Throat Chakra oil. And especially use the Brow Chakra oil when I'm writing. I just really like it. And also you can see I've used the Solar Plexus one a lot. I bring a lot of my favorite crystals and I love these for different reasons. Like this is a garnet here and that's really good for creativity. I've got an amethyst, some rose quartz, regular quartz, and this blue one I think might be a lapis lazuli, but I'm not sure. It's kind of a raw um, stone. And if you know what this one is, I would love to know. I'm not sure if it's lapis or not, but it's really beautiful and I love it. I also bring my e-reader with me because when I've been writing all day, sometimes at you know the last couple hours before bed or the last hour before bed, if I've hit my goal, I like to just chill out and read and it helps me get to sleep because my mind's been like working overtime. So 
the crystals and the chakra oil are just something personal I like to bring. I also love to bring a book, so either an e-reader or a physical book. I always bring my tarot cards. Right now I'm kind of into this golden universal tarot, which has, um, it's basically the same almost as the Rider Waite tarot, but it has these gold accents, which I love because I read tarot cards every night. And then I also have my Beats Pill, which is just a Bluetooth speaker that I love to have music, you know, and things with me when I'm writing. So I always have that. I also have a set of headphones for when um, Zoe doesn't want to listen to the same music that I'm listening to. Um, of course, I have my planner with me and some of my favorite pens. So one of them is a Muji pen. And that's pretty much some of my absolute must haves for when I'm writing. So the other thing when you're looking for a place for Airbnb is to make sure that you get a place with a nice table. Like one of the last places that we stayed had a terrible like high table and I don't like to sit at super high tables. So I kind of didn't hate that place. It was still beautiful, but it just wasn't my favorite comfortable thing. And I ended up working on the couch a lot. And so we worked on the couch too. So I've got my plotting notebook, which I've showed you guys in a previous video. I have my Chromebook here, which is um, my favorite way to write. I write in Google Docs. I've got a video coming soon about that. So this is my Samsung Chromebook. You guys have seen this before, but I tend to put these decals on it with my current work in progress cover on them. Um, just kind of gets me extra motivated. I have some of my favorite pins, like I said. I also have my pin case. I'm gonna be doing a video on what's in my pin case coming up, but it has one of the main things that I keep with me right now is I'm working on a book that has eight different points of view. So I have a different color for every single person that is in the book. And I also have matching index cards for those. Of course, you gotta remember your chargers because you can't write without your charger. <laughs> um, another must have for me is I get these flip chart like papers that have, they do have like a little bit of sticky. So this is an Office Depot brand, but Post-it makes them as well. And you get like a bunch. And I think a lot of teachers use them in like business meetings and stuff like that. But I love to get these and I put them up on the wall. They don't tear off, you know, the paint. So they're usually very safe. I put a little bit of washi in the corners to keep them from the corners from like pulling up, but I love having this. And what I will do is I will put my goal up here for the weekend or for the writing retreat. And every time I finish a writing sprint, I will put how many words I got, how many I've gotten for the day. And it just gives me that little bit of extra motivation to see kind of how I'm doing. This is a huge must have for me because having it up on the wall instead of in a planner or in a book is super helpful to have that like motivation to say, oh my gosh, you get up in the morning, you say, I wrote 8,000 words yesterday. This is amazing. And that really, really helps a lot. So having a nice, comfortable place to sit and put your stuff down is great. Having some kind of external motivation that you can keep track of how many words you've written. Um, I usually have this little cup here of flip chart type markers. If you use like Sharpies or something, it is going to bleed through the paper, but you can use these like Vic Market ones or some of the other really good ones are these specific Sharpie flip chart markers. They don't bleed through, so they don't go through the wall. The last thing you want to do when you're at a writing retreat is mess up somebody's wall when you've rented their house. So Zoe has one over there. I have mine. Um, she's sitting here writing, but she doesn't want to be too much in the video. So that is Zoe. She's here writing with me. Hi. We go on a lot of writing retreats together. Um, she's one of my best friends and has been, actually was my very, very first critique partner back in the day and helped me get started writing. So, um, so I will just quickly show you that she also has a separate bedroom back here. We try to get our own separate spaces if we can. So there's a, an extra bedroom and an extra bathroom back here. So that'll give you guys kind of an idea of what type of place we like to get. And you may think like, oh my gosh, that's too expensive or whatever. But truthfully, when you've got two people coming, a place like this in February, where we're not, we, sometimes we'll get a place directly on the beach, but this one, we just have to kind of walk right across the complex to get to the beach. So we don't have a beach view, but this place is only like $84 a night. So it's really affordable when you split it two ways. It's cheaper than you could get a hotel and we don't have to spend money eating out because we were able to buy groceries and bring things from home. So that way we're kind of able to, you know, split the cost a little bit. And truthfully, 
we could have, there's another bed over there, so we could have one more person here with us or we could share a bed over here. So you could get four people in here comfortably and that would have really brought the price down. So if you've been wanting to do a writing retreat, you might wanna look into having um, a friend go with you and do an Airbnb instead of a hotel, especially if you're like kind of off season, can be a really good option for you. So like I said, my absolute must haves, healthy food, I love to have my like crystals. I've got in my pen case, you'll see when I do a video on that, I have little Hello Kitty statues. If you've seen some of my videos before, I like to have just like little unicornos or little Hello Kitty statues that I use to decorate my space. I have actually a candle over there as well. I like to light a candle when I start writing. It's sort of just a mental um, cue that it's time to start writing. And um, I love to write out my words. So I like how many words I've got going. So hopefully I'll show you throughout the three days that we're here, those words are going to start stacking up. I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of extra plotting work today, so I don't know how much of the um, actual writing I'm going to get done today, but my goal for this writing retreat is to get at least 20,000 words. So I'll kind of talk to you a little bit more over the course of the retreat over how as to how I get that many words going. But one of the main things, like I said, is eating right, getting still getting lots of good sleep when I'm there, um, when I'm at the writing retreats, setting up my space so it feels really good, having a good friend with me that keeps me going because we can do writing sprints together. I also have, you know, people that I will sprint with online, so it doesn't feel like I'm all alone doing this even if I am at a writing retreat by myself, um, you've got other people that you can say, hey, let's get going. And when you do have somebody with you instead of being by yourself, it's good to be kind of mindful of how much time you're spending talking to each other because we could, I mean, we talked the whole couple hours, of course, driving down here and she stayed at my house last night, so that was great. But you know, one of the dangers that I've had, depending on which friends I'm writing with, Sometimes it would be like you spend the majority of the day talking, which talking can be great too, but you need to have some sort of system for saying, okay, at the top of the hour, we're going to run a writing sprint or we're going to write for an hour, no talking and have those headphones in and really be disciplined. So that's another way that I get a lot of writing done. I've had, I think my most successful writing retreat ever was three days where I got 36,000 words and that was my most, most successful one. But I would say on average between two to three nights, I will usually get around 15 to 25,000 words. And that is a huge boost to a, a work in progress. And I love immersing myself in the book for a little while, getting to talk through plot. That's another great thing of having Zoe here with me is she's really great to talk to you about plotting and we'll help each other with each other's stories and talk through characters and things like that. So, you know, if somebody gets stuck, you can say, let's go sit on the porch with a soda or a coffee or, you know, whatever. Let's go out and sit on the porch and help me talk through what's going on with this character. And that really helps a lot too, because then you don't really get stuck when you're sitting here writing. Um, so those are a lot of my first tips and I will kind of carry you guys with me. Zoe has already started working. I could hear her typing away over there. So she's probably already going to have words up pretty soon. So I've got to get started too. So I am going to let you guys go and kind of update you later on what we're cooking tonight and how things are going, how the words are going so far. Um, but those are my first tips and I will keep you updated. As we I have been... Uh, sprinting, plot sprinting with Zoe and with a group I belong to online. And now I think I'm just going to dive into the writing. So wish me luck. end of the first day for me. Um, I only made it five sprints tonight. I'd hoped those five sprints would give me about 5,000 words, but since I needed some plotting, I just got to 35.35, which is not a bad start for the first night since we didn't really get started till 6 p.m. So, you know, not too bad of a start. And um, tomorrow my goal for the day is about eight to 10,000 words. So I'm gonna get some rest, even though it's only about um, 10 o'clock at night, I'm gonna read a little bit and then I am going to get back to it pretty, hopefully pretty early tomorrow so I can have a full day. Hey guys, it is day two of my writing retreat. I actually got up uh, several hours ago and um, it turns out Zoe stayed up pretty much all night, which I didn't know. <laughs> she was writing all night um, and got like 10,000 plus words, but I got about, I ended yesterday at 35, 35 words. And then you can see here that I've, 
got three sprints in this morning before lunch, so I'm at 6,152 words. I'm hoping to make it at least minimum to 10,000 before dinner tonight, I'm really hoping. Um, so we'll see kind of how it goes. I would love to hit, like I've said, 20,000 for the retreat would be like my really hoping to hit it. So if I'm gonna do that between today and tomorrow, I've really gotta kind of step things up for this afternoon. So I'm hoping to get some good writing in coming up here in just a second. Luckily, I do have an online sprinting group with me too, so we're kind of going every Every half hour we're sprinting for 20 minutes and then taking 10 minute break in between and that's been working really well so it's been fun to have like some people online we're doing kind of like a virtual writing retreat which has been really fun so I'm gonna grab a drink and get back to sprinting hey guys so it is day three which is kind of the final day of our retreat we're leaving tomorrow morning so we won't be able to write too much tomorrow so we've been it's already three o'clock and I just didn't update you guys earlier but I've written about 3,000 words today and eaten some lunch and been just a little bit lazier today because I kind of think I overdid it just a little bit to, you know yesterday so I am at close to 15,000 words for the retreat, which is awesome. So I have about 5,000 to go to hit my 20,000 goal. So I just realized it's 70 degrees and sunny outside. So we are gonna go walk on the beach and hopefully get that burst of energy and then come back and get some more writing in. guys so it is now 6 15 we went to the beach for a little bit came back I took a little bit of a nap and then um, worked on some revision part so this new set of words the 3597 is from an older um, draft of this and I went through it took about an hour a little over an hour to get that revised and I'm adding it to my total even though it's not totally brand new words some of it is so I'm up to 18,263 and so I'm 1800 words about away from my goal for the trip so um, we're gonna stop and eat dinner and then hopefully I'll be able to knock out the rest of it and be done hey guys so I have officially crossed the finish line I um, just finished at 20,787 words, which means I got just over 9,000 words today, which is a really good day. I was really worried because I got up a little bit late. I got started a little bit late, but that's the power of doing writing sprints. I knew that if I could get, you know, eight or nine or maybe 10 writing sprints done today that I could hit that goal. So if I haven't mentioned this before, if you haven't watched one of my previous videos on writing sprints, a sprint is basically just you set a timer for a certain amount of time and then you say, I'm just gonna write for this amount of time and then I'm gonna take a break. So it's it's based on the Pomodoro method and it's something that um, I learned to do through NaNoWriMo, which is amazing. If you haven't done that before, Camp Nano is coming up pretty soon, I believe in April. So I'll be mentioning more about that coming up but I learned to do it through NaNoWriMo and it's really changed my writing because I can say okay I've just got 20 minutes and I'm just gonna focus on my writing for those 20 minutes I turn my headphones on because I'm one of those writers that likes to write with music um, and I just focus 100% I don't check any notifications I don't check my email I don't look and see if anybody's messaging me I don't talk to anyone I just 100% immerse myself in that story for 20 minutes and it's easy to hold my attention like really focused attention for 20 minutes and then I get a you know five or ten minute break which is nice because then I can get up and walk around I can answer any messages that people had I can post to my group and say hey guys you guys sprinting with me that kind of thing um, it kind of gives my brain that little bit of a break or I can sit and I can think about um, a lot of times actually I'll pace and I'll think about okay what I just wrote what I'm gonna write next especially if I'm sprinting late at night like it's I don't know 8.30 or 9 o'clock now at night, but um, when I will sprint by myself late at night, sometimes I'll stay up, you know, it'll be 2 in the morning and I'm sprinting. That's really nice because nobody is around to distract me at all, so I don't talk to anyone on my breaks because nobody's awake, so I will just tend to, um, you know, just pace like on my balcony or in the living room or wherever I'm writing and I will you know just think about what's coming next what's what's going on in this next scene and so then I'm 100% ready when that timer goes off to sit down and get back to writing so that timer is really valuable to me and it really helped me get 
focus today and get to work. So it being about nine o'clock, I am going to reward myself now with a cup of tea. I've got some tea and some water over here. Um, so I'm going to kind of reward myself with that. And um, I've got my computer sitting here. I'm already on the bed and I'm going to um, watch a movie on Netflix and just kind of enjoy the sweet success of hitting that 20,000 plus goal, which I, you know, I've, I go on writing retreats several times a year and I don't always hit my goal because sometimes the words just don't flow and you can't really force it when it's not coming out. So I was so grateful to have a really great writing retreat this time. And my friend Zoe is still going out there. I can hear her typing. She's got a few more chapters to write before she's done with her book. And, um, I just finished basically, um, you know, piece of fate surrender, but I have not finished the entire book. So there's a lot more work to do when I get home. And so I'm going to take the rest of tonight and just kind of enjoy the sweet victory of having a great writing retreat. And, um, I will catch you guys tomorrow when I head out. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this look into how writing retreats go for me, how I kind of got things done. Um, I actually didn't record as many clips as I wanted to, but when you get into the focus, it's kind of hard to remember to pick up that phone and start recording. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how writing retreats can go. I like to pace myself so that I'm not like writing all day, but I write a little bit in the morning. I fuel myself with really good food. We have lots of good conversation if you're there with a friend, which is a real bonus rather than being there by yourself where you can tend to allow yourself to kind of get distracted and sit and watch YouTube videos or something all day instead of writing. Um, so having that kind of, you know, motivation and energy of someone else who's working can be helpful. So um, I would have actually loved to do a writing retreat someday with a bigger group of women. So maybe like five or six people. So I'm going to kind of put that on my bucket list kind of thing for the next couple of years at some point to do sort of a bigger writing retreat. Hopefully you enjoyed that behind the scenes peek into what a writing retreat looks like for me, how I set my goals and that sort of thing. But if you're interested in, you know, how did I get so many words done? What do I really focus on? What do I think are the top tips for having a successful writing retreat? Because I have done at this point dozens of these over the last few years, and they are a great way to sort of catch up when you're behind or to immerse yourself in your story. So if you want to see that, stay tuned, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you'll get notified when you see new videos come up from me, because I will be posting that video tomorrow, as well as a list of all the top 10 ways over on my blog at heartbreathings.com. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this more videos to come and I will see you in the next one tomorrow. Bye.